Okay, let's talk about Beamstock. So this has gone through the roof. It used to be called Envision Solar and it's now rebranded to Beam Global. We've seen that it's just gone through the roof recently. So today we're going to be discussing the stock and we're going to take a look at how it's currently risen. So it reached a height of around about $37 today. So as you can see over five days, it's gone all the way up to about 62%, which is insane. So we've had a big juicy run up and over the course of a month, it's up over 120%. So what is it about this Beam Global stock that makes it so good? Why is it everybody piling into it now? It used to be called Vision Solar and now it's rebranded to Beam Global. Wablow! The world's fastest EV charging deployment. We're talking about Beam Global, baby. So get the EV charger of your choice deployed in minutes, not months. That's the slogan. So they're saying basically it doesn't take no permits, it doesn't take any construction, no electrical work needed, no utility bill. So what's really nice about this stock is they're trying to make clean energy really accessible and available and easy to set up. So they're basically decimating the infrastructure market. They're showing, you know what, you don't need to go get permits, this and that, we can set up in minutes. So here, 100% sustainable EV charging solutions are the most rapidly deployed EV charging stations in the world. Oh baby, zero construction, zero electric work, zero utility bill, zero permits. So this stock has got me so excited to be honest. We're just looking at the deployment time even here. It takes usually 24 months to deploy an EV charging station in New York, in California. But here they can deploy it in the fastest time they've done is 4 minutes. That's their record time. So if we take a look here, we'll have a little clickety click. You can see they can deploy in minutes instead of months. What's really juicy here is they actually produce patented products for EV charging. So, you know, electrical vehicle charging infrastructure for all forms of today's mobility. So they also do outdoor media. So this is like canvases for branding, visual engagement, community beautification and even energy security. So you know when things go off grid and in Philippines we have brownouts, here sometimes we have blackouts, they're always ready. So their emergency preparedness, they're energy resilient. So they got all their energy stored off grid. And the great thing is they do it for you. So currently they're working with government leaders to try and provide sustainable energy initiatives to create clean communities for all citizens. They're working with corporate companies in America, fleet managers, so all of the EV vehicles that are coming through, first aid responders, so in, in the event of disasters and emergency, they're there, utility companies, and even auto OEMs, so EV designers and manufacturers dedicated to electrification. Get the charger you want on the fastest deployed solution available, the most scalable solution available, and also the lowest TCO solution available. So if we take a look at their products here, let's look at the EV Arc 2020. So here, this is one of the best products they currently have out. It's a sustainable EV charging station, and it basically looks like a tree. If you look at the shape of it and the way that they're trying to absorb the light, they have that bendy root, you know, good sturdy base, and it looks like a tree. It's trying to cover loads of space without limiting the car parking space. So this is patented and it's the only 100% renewable, transportable and off-grid EV charging station in the world. So out of the whole world market, this is the only one like this. So something we get every single day is sunshine. So the energy will come from the sun, boom, comes into your little tree, get your charge point, bang, into your car and you're off to go. So as you can see, they want sustainable EV charging and each EV arc makes and stores all its own electricity so they can deliver clean renewable energy so EV drivers can drive on sunshine. So that's 245 miles per day you can power up. You can also charge up to six electronic vehicles at a time. And these trees can basically reach up to 12 parking spaces. The new EV arc is chargeable and deployable in minutes, not months. So it's held in place by gravity, no bolting, no gluing, no grid connection. It's simply set in place and it's ready for service. So you don't even need to have the customer there. You know, you can, it can be zero customer contact and the fastest record time that they set it up in is four minutes. You don't need to worry about your precious parking space. It just leans over the top and it's designed to fit any standard parking space. So EVs can park in the unit and there's no loss. You don't need to worry about it being bulky and taking up land. It's just there to be distributed over the top. They're also working together with charge points. So this is cool. You can have a charger of your choice. Choose the charger, we do the rest. As long as you have the parking space that can see the sky, you can order an EV arc with the charger of your choice already mounted. So they're working together with these charging points, you know. So day, night, bad weather, grid failure, they charge 24-7 because it's off-grid. 
one of the best things is it's transportable for ultimate flexibility. So say you don't get it right the first time. It's permanent yet it's also movable. So you can relocate it any place you want. So you can move this from leased properties, in emergencies, or even if there's a change in EV driver patterns. Grids fail and we don't fail because it's off grid baby. Yeah, we're talking about EV Arc 2020 will continue to charge EVs during blackouts and grid interruptions. So we are more dependent on energy than ever and our electric grid is overwhelmed and unreliable. Energy resiliency will become imperative. Take a look right here. Stats don't lie, baby. $200 billion annually is lost in productivity due to the grid failures. And these guys don't fail, so they'll never let you down. So here, off-grid emergency power, they got wind rated up to 120 miles per hour. They're flood proof up to 9.5 feet. They're also energy resilient, so it charges even during outages. In the event of emergency, who are you gonna call? Beam, baby. We're talking emergencies happen, you know? This is an optional emergency power panel providing vital electricity to first responders, medical workers, and citizens who may need it. They also have the solar tree, which should be coming out in the near future so we're just waiting on that so they're saying they're always expanding every single week by week they're transitioning if we take a look here they're also catering to ev fleets so as you see more and more people are transitioning into owning electric vehicles they're also looking at corporations and commercial fleets so fleet managers have all of these problems they have to analyze data work on safety and lives buying vehicles changing technologies they have to keep up with so much stuff and now they have to try and understand the EV charging infrastructure. What if Beam Global could create 10 charging stations at one place? You don't even need to be involved. So you can get it where you want it, when you want it. Forget the 10 year plan, build out your EV charging network fast. So if we take a look at their current customers, let's just take a look. Oh baby, we got AVV over here. We got Cadillac, baby. We have all of these different companies. You can see we've got University of California over there. Juicy baby. We've even got hospitals here in California and we've also got colleges. There are so many companies in this list that are currently using them and are looking to work with them. These are their customers. It's a mixture of California state parks. You've got over here the city of Glendale, you know, city of Long Beach, Los Angeles over there, even Oakland. So you've really got a plethora of loads of different businesses, cities. Everybody is using their technology. You've got even Google in there, big boys, Honda. GM. So the list goes on and on and on. Even NASA wants to use them and Pfizer. So <laughs> they've already established themselves with all of these companies. And as the infrastructure gets built in across the whole of America, they're looking to gain even more clients and customers. Here, Beam customers drive on sunshine over 3 million miles. Over 3 million miles and counting. Can you imagine? And over to the left here, as you can see, there's locations. 50 plus units are the bigger sun. So we've got some big suns across the map over here, over there, and we have loads of little spots. But as we turn into more of an electrical infrastructure, the whole of America will be covered in these. They've even got them in Spain, Hawaii, Brazil, Virgin Islands. They're global, baby. Beam global. If we take a look at their leadership, this is always important. We want to see that people have experience in their team whenever they're driving some of these innovative companies. So you've got Desmond Wheatley here, CEO. He's been there since it was Envision Solar. He joined there as a consultant and he served there for two decades. So his experience was in technology systems, integration, energy management and communications. This guy has also founded four profitable startup companies. So he has a good knowledge of how to create a startup and how to hold the business. We also have here someone who's worked with Fortune 500 companies, Catherine Dermot. The vice president of marketing sales has another 20 years in global technology marketing. Two decades in management over here, Rick Asman, Director of Manufacturing. Another 16 years in here. So they've got a big team full of experience here, which is really good for a company like this. So if we take a look at the latest news, we wanna see what is the reason why Beam is blowing up. You know, they've been around since 2006, they've rebranded. Why are they blowing up now? And it has everything to do with this government contract, baby. We're talking about Beam Global Energy awarded the GSA mass contract to provide EV Arc solar EV charging infrastructure products to the federal government. The federal government is now using Beam Global. They are the leading provider of innovative, sustainable technology for electric vehicles, charging outdoor media and energy security. Today, they announced the award of the General Service Administration multiple award schedule contract. 
So this is a big juicy contract, you know, here they currently offer their EV Arc line of sustainable EV charging infrastructure and through the GMAS contract, they're basically selling both batteries and power distribution equipment. So here they've been working with ChargePoint, as we all know Switchback Energy is merging with ChargePoint and they're looking to set up as many ChargePoints as they can across America. They currently have 87,600 and they're looking to try and install as much as Joe Biden's 500,000 ChargePoints as possible. So the US government operates the largest civilian fleet in the world with more than 640,000 vehicles. As fleet electrification increases due to the resultant reduction in fuel costs, maintenance and emissions, the requirement for rapid deployment of EV charging structure is expected to grow dramatically. So as we know, Joe Biden also wants to deploy more than 500,000 public charging outlets by the end of 2030 and a 100% clean energy economy with net zero emissions by 2050. So if we take a look at Beam's financial results, we want to figure out what's their finances like, what they're expecting to do. Are they making losses? Are they making profit? What are they doing at the moment? So this is their third quarter 2020 financial results. So here you can see they just closed an agreement with the city of San Diego. The company's first city contracted to host a sponsored network of EV Arc terminals. The company believes that this agreement will lead to the acquisition of our first sponsor and a significant recurring revenue business model which we believe we can replicate in other major cities. So this is juicy, this is like a first agreement that they can get. They also have 10.5 million in cash in their balance sheet through an underwritten public offering and they have a working capital of 14 million dollars which is sufficient they say for multiple years of operations. So they're not worried about finances right now, they're all right. They're just working on getting those contracts out, setting up the infrastructure and getting loads of customers. So they said that their rebrand to Beam Global was well received by everybody, investors, customers, partners. And here's the big juicy one. They were awarded obviously the GSA multiple awards schedule contracts to provide products to the federal government. So the company views this contract which allows federal agencies to buy Beam products at pre-negotiated pricing terms and conditions to be particularly important given the upcoming Biden administration. They also received the confirmation of their US patent and trademark office, which allows the issuance of a patent on the UAV ARC renewably energized drone recharging product. As we know, drones are the future. There's gonna be loads of these drones out delivering parcels soon. And they now have two patents on that drone software. Also, as loads of heavy duty electric vehicles come into play like electric buses, the solar tree products will be coming out, which will provide electric charging for these big heavy duty electric medium vehicles. So semi trucks, agriculture equipment, all of those things that are gonna be electrified coming up soon. They also powered the first electric aircraft, which is crazy. So these guys are innovating and they're changing things in the world. September 30, 2020, they had 12 million in cash compared to 3 million last year. So they've got more in their cash in hand, ready for operations. This was because of a public offering and they exercised warrants as well. Their working capital increased from 5 million to 13 million. So here revenue 1.2 million compared to 1.7 million last year, but they say it's because of COVID virus and early stage delivery challenges. They haven't made as much revenue this year, but that's understandable knowing that the pandemic has been going on. So obviously they're going to lose some money because they haven't made that much revenue. They've managed to cut down their operating expenses to $906,000 compared to $963,000, which is quite good. They had a higher overall loss, but this is understandable knowing that the current situation and climate that we face. So overall, Beam, this looks like a really juicy, delicious company. I think we've got to keep an eye on it. I've opened a small position myself on it. Remember, this is not financial advice. Do your own research. Go into this website, look at the financials and decide for yourself whether you think this is a good prospective company for you. Mr. Investalot over and out.